Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. This is going to be a short one. It is. It's going to be nice and short. It is June 17th, 2020. Hope your Wednesday is going well. Outside that window over there, there is some sunshine. That's awesome. The upper level low and the cutoff low has moved on after being responsible for very miserable weather here over the last few days. It's now moving on into the interior part of the Carolinas and uh, southeast or southwest Virginia. And so the weather outside my office is getting better. All right, let's get on with it. I promised that this would be short, so let me live up to that. First of all, today's update is brought to you by Kansas. That's right. Not the state, but the band Dust in the Wind. I am not going to attempt to sing. I gave that up many years ago, but Dust in the Wind, why do I mention that? Because of that. Look at all the dust in the wind. Wow. That is remarkable. The technology that we have as human beings, if we could use it for all good and no evil ever again, that would be great because this is truly remarkable. Dust in the wind out there, Africa. Um, hey, that's another uh, Toto did a good song called Africa. Remember that? Um, and anyway, off of Africa um, comes this tremendous plume of dust, silicate, that's what it is, sand and silicate matter suspended in the atmosphere. This will make its way all the way across and work its way over towards Texas, spreading through the islands here. Some magnificent sunrises and sunsets are coming. That Star Wars Tatooine dual sunset John Williams music remember that from episode 4 when Luke comes up there and sees the two setting suns that's what there was a Saharan air layer on Tatooine that's what it had to be anyway this is coming across and besides being meteorologically and satellite wise uh, whatever you call it aesthetically pleasing that's the word I'm looking for and that is that's amazing to look at it has meteorological significance, uh, well of course it does, but for our purposes this is a blanket on hurricane development. When you see that, there's no hurricanes, not going to happen. That is representing dry air, mid-level stability, warm air. You don't have that uh, cold air over warm air situation with instability so that the warm air can lift. This puts a big cap on development. And also important to note, this is very common uh, happening this time of year. And so it's not a sign that, well, I guess the hurricane season is not going to be bad after all. You know, this is what's supposed to happen. If we didn't have this going on and there was lots of hurricanes already, um, I'd probably just go live in a hole somewhere because that would just be the end of it. You know, we can only take so much. And luckily we get these Saharan air intrusions to kind of put a lid on things. That being said though, the leading edge of it right here, there's a tropical wave there, there's another tropical wave down here that has interacted with and is continuing to interact with Trinidad and Tobago and elsewhere in the Windward Islands, including Grenada. Grenada with a long A. Someone sent me a, uh, was it a comment? I think it was on YouTube that is pronounced Grenada. So I will trust that that is correct. But yeah, this big surge of uh, uh, dry, particulate-laden air coming off Africa will put a lid on things for the time being. Um, a little bit of tropical thunderstorm activity tangled up around Central America. But it's June, and we don't see activity boil up too much in the month of June. We just don't, and that's good. I like studying hurricanes, but I don't like studying them every day. You know what I mean? We, we don't need them every single day. We have to have hurricanes or we would probably have something worse. It's just unfortunate that they cross land and cause all kinds of misery. Speaking of misery, there's the cutoff low, still creating miserable conditions for portions of the Carolinas up here, but right here in my neck of the woods, southeast North Carolina, no rain today to speak of. The sun is out from time to time. It's very nice. Also of note, nothing really passing through the Caribbean per se until we get this tropical wave. So nice and calm conditions overall, which is no surprise. Uh, but this is interesting. 
Steve here, retweeted by my internet friend Yaakov over there in, I think Yaakov's still in Jerusalem, if I'm not mistaken. I love how you can just mouse over and see what you need to see. He's originally from Long Island, but I do believe he's over in the Middle East, and he does forecasting and retweets a lot of helpful information. And I caught this one from him, from Mr. Steve, is that Coppertino, I guess? Uh, anyway, this is what Steve tweeted. Look at this. This is from Cabo Verde, webcams. And uh, yuck, <laughs> that's a nasty, sandy sky right there. Pretty neat, though, that you can see this. That's amazing. Um, exactly what you'd expect from a sow outbreak, he says. There you go. It's raining sand. Another tune. It's raining men. Nope, it's raining sand. I don't know why music is on my mind today. Probably because I've been working on music for my soundtrack of my upcoming series, The Hurricane Highway. And I've just, I'm in a musical mood. But this is what it looks like. Pretty amazing stuff. Thanks, Yakov, for retweeting that from Steve. All right, as you'd expect, nothing in the Atlantic, nothing in the Pacific anytime soon. Even on the five day outlook. Well, maybe, but that's down the road a spell. Let's deal with that tomorrow and or Friday. Uh, I will say this. There is this convectively coupled Kelvin wave that's going to be moving into this region. That favorable window of opportunity that sometimes shows up in between larger background seasonal states. You get these sub-seasonal and even sub-sub-seasonal the sub-seasonal states more the Madden Julian oscillation, then your sub-sub-seasonal is kind of like these CCKWs. I know, it's like all these terms for you. Just look at it as a window that's being opened for development chances with increased moisture, a lessening of the shear, increased vorticity. That's what's coming uh, for the Western Hemisphere. And yeah, it's a few days away, but this is where we will be watching in the area to the south of Mexico. Vorticity wise, not much going on out there. There's the cutoff low, our tropical wave energy down here, more of it, and probably this is just the energy coming off with the African easterly jet and the intertropical convergent zone in the eastern Pacific. No suspect areas, any of these areas kind of consolidating just yet. You know, this is stretched out, that's stretched out, plus it's just too dry and stable out here. But we will be watching, as I zoom in on it, this area right down here in the coming days. But again, that's several days away. Nothing to be concerned with if you have interests uh, in Mexico. No problems. So the tropical wave moving through the Caribbean, into the Caribbean, across the Windward Islands. Let's speed this up, shall we? Speed Mother Nature up. We want to slow the clock down in terms of our lives, generally but we want to speed things up in other parts of it. Isn't that funny how that works? Anyhow, this is a nice tool from weathernerds.org. You can speed up the satellite animation, and you can see that tropical wave energy moving through the southern Windward Islands, uh, parts of northern South America, where there are some lightning strikes detected. That's the yellow speckles that you see there. This has already produced some showers and storms and some gusty winds. I received this email uh, just a little while ago from, um, what is that, Darren down in the region, and um, some damage. You see a tree damage right there. There's the broken part of the branch, and this is laying up on the water tank there. So these tropical waves do bring showers and storms and occasional gusty winds. Some more evidence of that tree that has broken off the large piece of the branch. Very tropical looking. You can just look at this picture and assume that it is humid and kind of muggy down there. Very tropical. Large leaves on the vegetate on the trees down there. The leaves do what? They soak up the energy. The closer you are to the equator, the larger the leaves are to soak up that energy. That's how it works. It's really interesting, our biosphere on our planet. Areas affected from the adverse weather from that tropical wave. Trinidad and Tobago. So I appreciate Darren sending that in. And we're still pretty short. This is short, right? There's nothing to ramble on and on about because there's not much happening right now. 
But hopefully, instead of just tuning out, every once in a while, I'll get sort of a grouchy YouTube viewer that says, oh, didn't hear anything interesting in the first minute, so I'm tuning out. I try to educate you on these things and show you some interesting things along the way. So even though we don't have one of those, that hurricane there with a beautiful eye, and all that that implies doesn't mean that these updates are not informative and interesting. So even when we don't have a red X or a big hurricane out there, I hope you still tune in and learn something every day. It's always, you know, I learn something every day. And I'm trying to help you do the same. Hey, look, as always, thank you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Hurricane Track. YouTube slash Hurricane Track, and I am supported by our wonderful crowdfunding group, our patrons, just like we have patrons of the arts. You have patrons of the arts in you know the modern world, and we call that Patreon, patreon.com slash Hurricane Track if you want to get involved. There's a lot of reasons to do so. Check it out sometime if you're bored, and you might just be surprised and say, you know what, this is something I'm going to get behind. And it actually helps. It makes a difference. So I thank you all. All right, that's it for me. I will be back with more for you tomorrow. We'll start to take a look at this next burst of activity that will start probably in the eastern Pacific. We'll begin to drill down and look at that more closely starting tomorrow. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Again, thank you for tuning in to me. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.